And question number one, how do we prepare our hearts so that God can use us? Because it's no, no good learning what God wants to do through us if we don't want to do it. If we have to be dragged kicking and screaming into it, we're not excited about it. I've got to get my heart right first. So let's look at verse 16. Typically we skip these first two verses and jump right into what, what Jesus says. But these verses are important. Matthew writes, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and, and said to them, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Let's stop right there, because here's the answer to our first question. How do I prepare my heart so that God can use me? Let's write this down, and then we'll talk about it. I need to work through my doubts I need to work through my doubts until I can worship Jesus with a full heart and bow to his authority. That's what these verses are saying. This first part is interesting. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Isn't this the most curious verse? We're talking about the 11 disciples. Remember, Judas had killed himself. But... They're with Jesus, and it's their last day with Jesus. They've been with him for 40 days after the resurrection, and now he's led them to the mountain. He's going to lead them, leave them and return to the Father. And knowing this, you might say, what? What are they doubting for? It's after the resurrection. What's going on with these guys? Well, actually, there's, there's a lot that they can still be doubting about. It's interesting, the, the Bible gives us hints that something had changed about Jesus' appearance after the resurrection. He now had his spiritual body. And he's the first fruits. One day you and I are going to have a spiritual body. And there was something just different about it, so people had to look twice at it. I, I sure hope I don't have the same body on the other side. I mean, keep some of the stuff, but, you know. Not only that, but, you know, Jesus, in a couple of the stories, had to eat food in front of some of them. And he had to show Thomas, remember Thomas? He had to actually show him the scars from the crucifixion to convince him that it was really him. So they had these little niggling doubts, but I think the greatest thing they were still struggling with was what it was all about. Why did he die on the cross? And what, what is going on here? Remember, we're 10 days out from Pentecost. Holy Spirit hasn't come, on, come, come upon them yet, so they're still trying to figure things out with their own natural mind. And the Bible says you can't do that. And so they can't make f full sense of, of what is going on and why is Jesus leaving and, and what incarnation are they supposed to do next? We, we learn in Acts 1, in Luke's version of this same story, that the disciples at this point asked Jesus a question. So Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel at this point? And Jesus must have just done the old V8 thing at that because they're still operating under, under the old paradigm that, that the Messiah is going to come and kick some Roman butt and then establish Jerusalem as some kind of holy caliphate. And yet, that's not what Jesus is on about, so they're trying to figure it out. Now, the Greek word for doubt here, and using BibleHub.com, say that, BibleHub.com, any of us can find the meaning of any word in the Bible, any word in any verse, three clicks, and you're there. You can find the original meaning, and you ought to do that. That's an important interpretation skill. Do you remember the word that begins with H we taught you during the theology forum? Hermeneutics. Wow, more than, more than a couple said that. I'm impressed. So looking up this word, it means going two ways, shifting between positions, a double stance, uncertain at a crossroads. I like that. And that's what they're struggling with right here. That's where, what some of you are struggling with today. Some of you are, are uncertain at a crossroads. Some of you may be feeling that way about the church itself or, or, or in your walk with, with Christ. You've been drawn to Jesus and you, you love him, you think, but there's this, 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 and this that you still got to figure out. And when you're that way, uncertain at a crossroads, well, are you going to be excited about telling other people about Jesus if you're still trying to figure him out? Well, no. You know, it's like you've started dating someone, but you're still not sure if he's the right one yet. Is he really handsome? I don't know. And I've met his parents, and they're weird. And then you don't change your Facebook status until suddenly you're all in with him. And your doubts are gone, and suddenly it's click, 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 and you're filling the social media with pictures and loading up Instagram to your friends or are unfriending you because of it. And, and that's how it is with Jesus. Once your doubts get answered, oh, you're all in. 
But you need to work through those doubts. And until you do, you can't worship Jesus with a full heart, and you won't serve him with a full heart.